Now, go back and let us take a step back and see what where we are. We have a set C which is which is a closed convex cone and now we have a point 1 comma 0 that lies outside C okay. and C is a closed convex cone. So, C is a closed convex cone 1 comma 0 lies outside C. What does this mean? The, it means there exists a separating hyperplane that separates 1 comma 0 from C right. So, this point can be separated from C ok. So, which means there exists there exists a separating hyperplane. Now, the separating hyperplane remember C is a set in R m plus 1. So, let the hyperplane should also have its normal should also have uh, um, uh, m plus 1 coordinates ok. So, let me write it like this. So, there exists a s comma y not equal to 0 ok. So, that is your that is this is the hyperplane normal such that s comma y transpose 1 comma 0 is less than the infimum of s comma y transpose r comma w where r comma w belong to the set c. Let me write this more neat a little neatly. So, s comma y transpose 1 comma 0 right this is less than the infimum of s, s comma y transpose r comma w for as uh, r comma w ranges in C. Now, let us just evaluate this s comma y transpose 1 comma 0 is simply s that is my left hand side right hand side is infimum of s into r because they are both scalars plus y transpose w these are both vectors of length y right as r comma w belongs to c. So, now s must be less than this and we know that s comma y as a vector as a whole is is not equal to 0 that means it cannot be that it all its components are 0 all right ok. All right. So, now tell me what can you say about this thing the green thing that I have just underlined the infimum of s r plus y transpose w as r comma w ranges over c. Remember c is a closed convex cone right. So, if r comma w is in C, then a scaled version of it is positively scaled version of it is also in C. So, what should be this the value of this this infimum? This infimum is a is minimize what you are doing is effectively minimizing a linear function over a cone right a linear function the slope of that linear function is given by s and y. And the and, and the well the the point in the cone is r comma w r comma w ranges in this cone. So what can you say about about the about this the infimum here? So let's let's suppose it can uh, can it be can it be a positive value? Can it be five, three, one point five? If it is any positive value, right? then because c is a cone I can always scale it down and bring it down to 0 right. I can all if I if some r comma w gives me a value 5 suppose I can take one tenth of r comma w and get a value of 0 0.5 right 5 by 10 right. Essentially 
I can bring the value down as much as I want and eventually bring it to 0. So, the infimum cannot be any uh, some positive value like this. Can it be a negative value? So, this infimum cannot be cannot be positive since c is a cone. Can it be negative? Can it be minus 1? Why? Again, you can scale it in the opposite direction. You can you can magnify also, right? So, if it is minus 1, I can multiply it. Uh, if an r comma w gives me a value minus 1, right? I can take twice that and get minus 2, 10 times that and get minus 10 and so on and I will and not uh, lose feasibility at all. So, I will remain in the, in the cone, right. So, I can scale up and then go down to minus infinity. Now, what is the problem with minus infinity? I know that this infimum is definitely greater than some s, where s is some finite value. We have been guaranteed that there exists such an s, right. It is some finite value. I do not know what it is, positive, negative, whatever. It is definitely some finite value, right. So, if it is, if it is, uh, so the infimum therefore cannot be minus infinity. So, it cannot be positive, it can so infimum if it is positive then you can you have a contradiction you can bring it down to 0, it cannot positive value cannot be an infimum. If it is negative then it had to become minus infinity that is also not possible because of this inequality. So, you know in other words you are left with just one choice, what is the infimum then? The infimum must be 0, right. So, let me summarize this, so cannot be negative again since c is a cone. Cone and c is a cone and s is finite. Make the value So, in other words the optimal value has to be 0, right. So, consequently what we have is that s therefore, is strictly less than 0, okay. And the optimal value let us call this here, let us call this optimal value say c star, c star is equal to 0, okay. Now, the optimal value is 0 uh, and s is strictly less than 0. This is what we have concluded so far. Now, what, since the optimal value is 0, what this means is, let me go to the new page. So, c star is equal to 0, which is means basically infimum of s r plus y transpose w as r comma w ranges in c, ok. This the infimum here is great is is equal to 0 ok and we have that s is strictly less than 0. Now, s r plus y transpose w is is uh, it is uh, the infimum of that is is equal to 0 which means s r plus y transpose w is greater than equal to 0 for all r comma w belonging to c. Now, r comma w belongs to C, then go back to the definition of the set C. We define the set C here. This was, this is how we define the set C. r is T z 0 minus C transpose x and w is T b minus A x for some x greater than equal to 0 and T greater than equal to 0, right. So, let me substitute that this is this is greater than equal to. Uh, so, I have s r plus y transpose w greater than equal to 0. Now, I just substitute this I get I get s times t z 0 minus c transpose x plus y transpose t b minus a x greater than equal to 0 for all x greater than equal to 0 and t greater than equal to 0. Let me rearrange this a little bit. 
So, I have just rearranged a few terms here. I picked up the terms that a couple of terms that involve x and put them together here. So, this is C transpose x, uh, there is a there is a minus s which I pulled out outside. I took a uh, I took y transpose a x ok, there is a minus out uh, minus sign here that that minus sign has come here and since I pulled a minus s outside that I have divided by a minus s right. Just uh, I, I am writing this specifically in this kind of uh, some uh, little non intuitive form for uh, for a particular reason and then everything else I have put here. So, I have a y transpose b uh, that was multiplied by uh, by t. So, t has come out and, and I have an s t z 0 which uh, which is left here right. So, all of this is greater than equal to 0 and remember this has to be true for all x greater than equal to 0 and t greater than equal to 0. Now, this this claim here this inequality has to be greater than equal to 0 for all x greater than equal to 0 and t greater than equal to 0 right, which means I can put my favorite values of x and t and check right. Say first, so I can put say first let us suppose I put suppose we put say t equal to 0. What if I put t equal to 0 what do I get? If I put t so, put t equal to 0 here, then then this term disappears, the second term here disappears because it is uh, it is been multiplied by t. So, all I all I am left with is then minus s so c transpose x minus y by minus s transpose a x greater than equal to 0 for all x greater than equal to 0. Now, remember s was negative, s was strictly negative which we just concluded that. So, I can just uh, divide throughout by minus s, minus s is, is a positive quantity. So, I can just cancel this minus s out and all what I am left with then is c transpose x minus y by minus s transpose a x greater than equal to 0 and this is true for all x greater than equal to 0 ok. So, let me again gather some the x terms together. So, this uh, this this is saying so this has to be greater than equal to 0 for so, what I have got is c transpose c minus sorry c minus a transpose y by minus s the whole thing transpose x greater than equal to 0 for all x greater than equal to 0 right. Now, this has to be greater than equal to 0 for all x greater than equal to 0 what does this mean? What, so, it is a these I have taking some an inner product of some vector with x and I want that inner product to be greater than equal to 0 whenever x is greater than equal to 0. So, what sort of components should that inner product ha that vector have? Non negative components right, because if any of the components is negative then what I can do is make my x very large for that component and 0 for everything else and that will give me a negative number that would not give me a greater than equal to 0 right. So, the only way this is possible is that the that the the term in the bracket is less than equal to 0. So, a transpose this is less than equal to c ok. So, let me just box this this is my first conclusion a transpose y y by minus s is less than equal to c all right look let us let us we got to this by putting t equal to 0 let us uh, let us now put x equal to 0. Suppose, I put x equal to 0 what do I get? So, now this term the first term here is going to disappear if I put x equal to 0 if the first the if I put x equal to 0 this all these terms are going to all be 0. So, all I am left with is the second term which means I have t times 
s z 0 plus y transpose b greater than equal to 0 for all x greater than equal to 0. and t greater than equal to 0 all right ok. So, now let me once again do the same thing that I did earlier I know that uh, I know that minus s is positive. So, s is s is uh, s is negative. So, minus s is positive. So, let me look uh, let me write it like this let me write this whole thing in the following way. Sorry. So, I so, since I have put x equal to 0, I do not need the x greater than equal to 0 here. I just need this to be true for all t greater than equal to 0. Now, okay, let, in fact, we can do a quick analysis here also. Since this has to be true for every t greater than equal to 0, it just means what does this mean? t is greater than equal to 0. This has to be true for every t greater than equal to 0. Equal to say, say t equal to 100. This must be true for t equal to 100. So, what does this mean? Yeah, so it means that the the term that's in the bracket must be must also be positive, right? Uh, must also be non-negative, which means S Z zero plus Y transpose B is also greater than equal to zero. Okay, so let me rewrite the whole thing. It, uh, rewriting it basically gives me P transpose Y by minus S is now greater than equal to Z zero. I can divide throughout by minus s and the, uh, the inequality does not flip uh, flip sign because minus s is positive. Right? So, I got b transpose y by minus s is greater than equal to z 0. Right? So, here is my second conclusion. So, now what, do, what do these two box conclusions mean? The first conclusion here says that y by minus s y by minus s satisfies a transpose y by minus s less than equal to c which means y by minus s is feasible for my dual y by minus s is a feasible point for the dual right and the second point second one says that the va optimal value that uh, sorry the value of y by minus s the objective value is greater than equal to z0 and what was z0 z0 was the optimal value of the primal. So, which means I have found a feasible point for the dual ok. So, y by minus s is feasible for the dual and satisfies b transpose y by minus s greater than equal to optimal value of primal but then what did we know from weak duality weak duality told us that this inequality is actually the opposite direction right so so weak duality told us that p transpose y has to be less than equal to the optimal value of the primal for every feasible y. So, now we have found a new feasible a feasible point y by minus s uh, such that its optimal its value is greater than equal to the optimal value of the prime. So, which means we have got which means the only way this is possible is that there is equality throughout right which means that now by weak duality. it is the optimal value of the primal and in fact this is this this automatically shows that y by minus s must be the optimal value must be the optimal solution of the dual also right so which means in fact that the optimal value of the dual is equal to the optimal value of the primal So, it has shown that the optimal value is attained by y by minus s 
that is the point that attains it, we know that it exists, we know that uh, we also know that the optimal value uh, of, of it is uh, must be equal to that of the prime. Right? So, weak duality gave us the inequality in one direction, the other inequality came by the in the in through this theorem basic and what was the key idea we used in it separating hyperplane right the uh, the existence of a separating hyperplane we basically constructed a set c and show and strategically chose a point outside it and showed that you can separate the two using the fact that you can they, they can be separated we we got our result now you might wonder obviously how how did um, someone think of this particular set? How did you think of that particular point, etcetera? That that uh, we will build the intuition for that uh, so, uh, later in this course or uh, in the following lectures also. The 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 basic uh, the basic intuition for it is to remember that this set C is actually nothing but the projection of this set S. The set S that I have shown here. And what does this set S have? The set S has a representation here of the feasible points for, for the primal as well as the feasible points for the dual. You can say for effectively it is talk, it has a X which captures the feasible point of the primal and it has a W which captures a, a variable for, for the constraints, one for each constraint. And how many how many variables are uh, how many variables are there in the dual if you go back and see see the variables of there are as many variables in the dual as there are constraints in the primal every constraint in the primal gets one dual variable and every every constraint you can say in the in the dual gets one primal variable right so, this is obviously reminding you of something that you have already seen, which is that the dual must be have some relation with Lagrange multipliers. You have seen Lagrange multipliers as, as variables that you have one per constraint, right. And effectively that is what uh, that is what we are seeing here. So, in fact, the, the, the optimal the optimal value of y is actually the optimal value of Lagrange multipliers for, for this particular problem. Now, I have not taught you Lagrange multipliers as yet for inequality constraints and so on. So, we will come to that, that will become evident very quickly. But essentially the, the main the main reason why this the, the, the thinking behind this is that is to capture the problem in both the space of the primal as well as the dual means both in the space of the decision variables as well as in the space of the constraint. And, and that is the, the uh, so you, uh, so you can, there are many different ways in which such sets can be constructed and they all lead you to uh, duality type theorems like this, ok. So, the, the correct tension that, that is, that, that, uh, that is present in an optimization problem is always the tension bet between not multiple decisions that you have to make, but rather the decision between, the, the tension between optim, uh, the, uh, the decision variables and the constraints and or essentially the Lagrange multipliers and that is being captured by this particular set. So, you will see more of this uh, as we go later in this course ok. So, to summarize essentially what we have shown is is that you know the the first thing which is weak duality that that is a claim that holds for free or I mean almost for free that it just comes by the way this is constructed you can immediately argue that. And we, but moreover, there is also this claim that if a primal has has an optimal solution, then so does the dual, and the optimal values of are equal. Now this also means there are the this also has computational implications. For example, it may be that primal uh, looks much harder to solve than the dual. Doesn't matter; you can solve either, and you'll get the same answer. Right, so it uh, it has uh, it's it is that's one of the motivations behind uh, behind uh, uh, algorithms also. Okay, I will uh, in the next class I will give you another application of uh, of strong duality okay, that arises in network flow problems. Okay, so we'll end here.